Welcome, Miss Cinnaberm. <laughs> we watched Greta this weekend. This is the spoiler uh, show. So if you haven't seen Greta and you're planning on watching it, go check out our review so you're not spoiled. And uh, yeah, we're going to get straight into it. Yep. Uh, my name is Anthony Renteria and with me is Chelsea. Hey, guys. All right. So what did you think about Greta? Greta? Yeah. Uh, I didn't know it was a scary movie. It was a scary movie? Well, it was well, it was trying to be a scary movie. Yeah. You know, because I, I didn't see any <laughs> any trailers or anything. So going yeah. into it, I was like, oh, this is interesting. And as soon as I heard the music mm. with her going through, with Greta going through, what's the name? The other actress? The other actress. Chloe. Yeah, Chloe Grace no. Moritz. On the, in the movie, what's her name? Uh, I don't remember. Anyways. Abigail or some shit. No. <laughs> Greta going through Chloe's Facebook and then they inserted the whole the whole clip the whole clip of like Francis. Her name is Francis. Yeah, Francis. Well you know what I'm saying. The they put the music over it and I was thinking, What? This is a scary movie? And then I don't know, I was confused. I didn't watch the trailer so I didn't have like that idea of it. But yeah. At the end of it, it was so interesting because I had a moment where I was thinking, well, what if they made it to where instead of the, it was how they played in this movie, mm -hmm. the whole movie you see a girl and, a, and her mom, supposed mom, and they're living their lives or whatever, and you constantly see shots of the mom putting stuff in the drink kind of like those hover shots mm. yeah. over the cup and then at the very end you know it reveals to you that she's kidnapped and that's not her real mom you yeah like that's not her real mom like yeah. she's been manipulated this whole time so wow. it gave me that idea and i was thinking whoa that would be such a great plot twist to have pushed to the end and you experience the life through you know the you make it all nice and pretty or whatever mm -hmm. it was just like a family drama or whatever until the end yeah and then it really is a scary movie yeah. until the very end yeah. kind of like a hereditary you could take mm. it not as a scary movie but as a family drama yeah until uh you know all the crazy stuff happens at the end and then you're like oh shit yeah i felt the same way i was really i i kind of knew it was a horror movie because before we watched it, I watched the trailer. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, they're going for typical horror vibes. Uh -huh. But then I was surprised because it took like a whole hour until the horror stuff happened. And yeah. I was like, oh, this is just a cool little like movie about these girls. And then mm -hmm. she lost a parent and she's like coping with that with this old lady. And it's really yeah. weird and awkward. But I was like, this is cool. And I yeah. thought they were going to go deeper into their emotions. Like, why did her mom die? Oh. Or like have some more drama about that like yes. more emotional breakdowns and showing how both of them are sick you know how everyone's like oh she's just a sick old lady but yeah the movie never tries to let you sympathize with her which yeah. is where you get really good villains or oh, evil yeah. people is where you see why they're fucked up or oh, you yeah. feel why they're fucked up yep. and then it scares you even more because yep. you're because like super psychological yeah you're like wow this person's way more fucked up but in this movie it reached a certain point and then it just stopped. stopped and then it just became a typical horror movie or whatever the thing that i was not expecting it was like oh my god the first time it tried to be a horror movie was a very obvious moment where she's uh working at a restaurant mm -hmm. and then you see greta and it's like dun, dun, and then it's so loud mm -hmm. and then the glass shatters and then it cuts again and it's like dun, dun, mm -hmm. to her and then it and then it goes back to Chloe and she's like <gasps> And then it cuts back to her again outside, and then she's like, dang, dang. Mm -hmm. And it does it like five times. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Well, it wasn't that annoying to me. No, it's not that it was annoying. It was just... No, like the whole scenario of it being so obvious wasn't as obvious to me as what I should have said. What do you mean? Like that, I've never seen that before. Dang, dang. No, the... She's across the street, and then she's just standing there. No, no, that's fine, but the way it was shot and edited, it was oh, like, oh. boom, she's on the street. 
and then like we should know mm -hmm. and then it goes back to her and then she looks again and it's like chin, chin. like it kept oh. doing the scare <laughs> oh and i kind of laughed a little bit because it was so cheesy if you weren't scared the first two times maybe after this yeah these next two you'll be scared that's when i was like wait what the fuck is going on in this movie was that like an accident because it was the same exact shot mm -hmm. played like three times i and thought it was uh positioned in a way to show like the passage of time it was on the same moment of her cutting breaking the glass and oh. she was like oh my god did you get in on you and then it cut back to her and then she stands up cuts back to her and then she comes back with the rag and then oh. it cuts back to her and she's still there yeah and then she's okay. like what the fuck is wrong with her and then it cuts back to her <laughs> and then it's a wide shot yeah it should have just been that close up to scare people and then a wide shot. Yeah. I don't know. It was really cheesy. That was one of the cheesiest moments. If I would have watched this movie at home with you, mm -hmm. I would have laughed out loud. Like, really? It was immediate reaction. Wow. So you weren't scared at all? No. At all? It just made me laugh because it was so cheesy. Oh my gosh. For me, it, I was a little scary because I just imagined... Um, Aside from the movie, I imagined what that type of person did on a daily basis, uh, like on a on a creep side, you know, she would be all up in her Facebook like it showed. Oh, but yeah. I just went on and imagined like she probably scared, looked up so much information of Greta. I mean, uh, um, Francis, Francis, all his information. She probably went into her family's history yeah. and went straight into all of these things that that um, I keep forgetting her name. You just Francis, Francis likes and stuff just to think about more ways to manipulate her. You know, they never showed that in the movie, like her getting to know Francis more and sneaking those things like, oh, you like this, right? And then Francis would be like, oh, I, did, I never told you that, you know, mm. type of thing. But this movie had so much potential. Yeah. One thing that I, now that you're talking about that, like how it was showing her stalking her through mm -hmm. her Facebook and shit. Yeah. I wish they would have not showed us that. I wish they would have played it super straight. And mm -hmm. then you as a viewer are with her and like, is she just a creep or yeah. like, what's up? Yeah. And it just her continually asking for forgiveness, you know, like mm -hmm. making her be your friend. Mm -hmm. The the older uh, Greta Greta could like have a scene where she's breaking down crying like my daughter killed herself and it's all my fault and like really opening up mm -hmm. and then having uh, Francis open up about how her mom died. Yeah. And them having an actual like connection about their grief and then people were like, no, she's weird. Something's wrong with her. And then her continually like, no, we she's have... just a sad old lady. Yeah. Like, and... She's depressed. Yeah. And I, w I would have loved if it dug so deep into that. And then it turned into the horror movie because then you'd be like, fuck, man. I got tricked as a viewer. Really? No, that's oh, what yeah. you're, you're trying yeah. to say, right? Yeah, and it would have worked. And then it, it would have been really cool because both of these women are, like, really good actresses. Oh, like, even yes. though the movie was really cheesy at times, the Greta, uh -huh. she was really good as an old lady. Yeah. Like, she she was weird. Very weird. And that's her, It's I'm... all in the eyes. Did you yeah. notice that her eyes looked like they were sucking the soul out of everyone? Yeah. Like, imagine having that character be extremely vulnerable. Even though it's lies, having her fake tears yeah. and stuff oh, and then yes. her twist it at the end and be like kind of like the the scene where it's split the split mm. scene where he goes from one person and they're crying to the next and then just stops yeah having probably seen uh greta do that would really freak oh, me out yeah. that would have been really cool and then it would just um what was i gonna say fuck i don't know <laughs> uh, but yeah i wish that would have happened that would have been super dope i did think it was really cheesy like as soon as it all started happening, it was like a very obvious type of uh, setup. Yeah. Mm. But then it was really weird because the movie was doing things that I wasn't really. It did like. It was cool because it was a little different than what I'm used to seeing, but at the same mm -hmm. time, it added a lot of plot holes. For example, she's missing, mm -hmm. and then how are the police not, not searching for her immediately when she already has a previous case of assault against her from mm -hmm. the restaurant? Like, she would have been the first Yes, but target. they don't know where she lives. Even the file, the detect, the private detective that was called upon, he mm -hmm. didn't know where she lived. He had to investigate. Oh, okay. But still, I mean, I feel like police could find her. 
Mm. Especially with the information, if the best friend was like, yeah, she left purses on the subway, you know? Or, how did she make money? She's always going out, too. They have literally, literally, a no, she would have to put an address because when you're arrested, you have to put an address where you're living from. So, boom. Well, the thing that I noticed that they were doing different was the whole best friend thing. Mm. She wasn't a dumb best friend. Yeah. And she wasn't your typical, um, you know, like, I don't know what I'm trying. Like glitzy, poppy, no, bubbly. No, no, She was more evol- involved in the movie. Yeah. It wasn't, oh, that's my best friend. And then you don't see them until the end. Mm. It's like, oh, that's my best friend. And she's always going back to having conversations with the best friend. Yeah. And she's always giving direct advice and listening as well so the, i really like that difference because a lot of times you don't really get um the human side of one person because yeah. they never have outside relationship it's just this is what's happening to them you know but i thought it was really cool how the best friend ended up taking it on the whole challenge taking on the challenge by herself and thinking oh how would i get to this person's like oh she left purses for people to find Mm -hmm. so that's obviously how i'm gonna get it and she i imagine her going back to her condo and then she because obviously she doesn't have to work so she goes gets dressed puts a wig on has like a whole schedule of all the all the things she's been uh all the train she's been on what times and everything and uh just waiting till that one second when she finally finds that lady she's like oh shit i got this mo i'm gonna find my best friend and then she gets the purse doesn't even look in it because obviously she already knows it's her and then manages to get an accent get a whole story like i'm trying to be a model or some shit you know like just that thought how detailed everything was and she actually sounded like she was from texas yeah which was amazing and then for her to finally be be well you could tell she's like a very strong decision maker so Mm -hmm. when she decides she's gonna do it so she's like oh yeah i'm a roofie her and i'm gonna go to the end of the world to find my best friend yeah if i have to kill this lady i will you mm-hmm. know it was pretty cool yeah having that dynamic i really loved how they shot that whole scene all her scenes because it was just from behind and you just saw like the little bob haircut or whatever mm-hmm. like to her shoulders yeah so you had no idea it was her and then she always wore like really flashy clothes or whatever mm-hmm. like colorful and then in this she it was all like dark colors yeah so i didn't even think it was her until they were having the conversation and then i was like oh this is probably her because i was like it's either gonna be her or the movie's about to end and it's just gonna end with her saying, saying oh her saying uh be quiet over there you know just because it was the original conversation yeah but then I was like, nah, this movie's gonna have a true ending, so it's probably your friend. But that was still really cool. Speaking of, Ooh. like, how they shot it, mm-hmm. wait, you can go. No, no, Because you usually make better points than me. <laughs> no, you, go ahead. Okay, well, I was gonna say that, do you remember the shot where it showed Greta, I mean, yeah, Greta walking from one side of the hallway to the other in a nightmare? Well, not a nightmare, after she had poisoned... Um, Francis, and it was all blurry, but you saw Greta go from like kind of like skip. Oh yeah, I really like that. Yeah, that uh, what is that? The editing, or yeah. maybe it was like the whole how they shot it or whatever. But yeah, that was really cool. I like how it was all like super distorted and stuff, and it was all like shaky. Well, I like how that was so simple, and you could tell that she was drugged by literally the visuals it wasn't Mm. super well at least that scene wasn't really shaky it was just still and then her her eyes were like blurry or whatever yeah it was really cool i've never Mm. seen that effect i've seen it a couple times but this one was a pretty smooth uh execution of it sometimes people go way too far (laughs) or they do it way too little and this was a smooth and then i like how it it wasn't the whole scene was like that when it cut when you saw her it was normal shot Mm -hmm. it was just when you were in her perspective sometimes a lot of filmmakers do the point of view like that and mm-hmm. then when it cuts to her and she's like and you see her mm-hmm. third person camera seeing her and she's mm-hmm. like and you see your arms waving oh, and stuff yeah so that that was a cool choice to only do it when she's looking out did uh, you like the whole dream sequence? Uh, it was very odd having it 
play out so realistically. Yeah. And then they just cut and she's in the box. Well, or in the whatever that thing is. I didn't like the whole beginning because it was like, no, now I'm just confused. I wish it would have been something would have been off. Mm. Like things weren't where they were before or mm -hmm. things were more cramped or they were shot with a wide lens or something. Mm -hmm. Like a different uh, shot style. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't shot in the same way that it happened originally. So it felt weird. Mm. and then that would have been a really cool like really wide lenses yeah. like everything feels kind of distorted and then have it lead to her and the i love the elevator part though where the elevator started oh, yeah. crushing in that was that was such a cool style such a stylistic choice because she's waking up and even though she is uh unconscious she can feel that she's contained in a box i would have done that cut immediately though instead of her that and then it goes to her being asleep and then she's not really rustling and then she wakes up i would have done it from her <sighs> like in the elevator and then do a match cut of her being in the box and then she's jolting awake in the box mm -hmm. i did not like the nightmare to smooth wake up because that doesn't make sense when i wake up from a nightmare i'm kind of i'm not sweating yeah well i mean she was like crying or whatever but it just it was too smooth of a wake up because when i have really bad nightmares i'm i jolt you know well that does make a lot of sense especially like it would be a cool her jolting and you know like hitting her head or some shit yeah. well maybe that would be too much but for sure a, a more disoriented mm -hmm. wake up would be cool i just wish they would have done that match cut that would have been so fucking. i would have <gasps> been like oof. you know what i thought was really creepy what? all the dolls the dolls and the yeah. thing with him? ever since i watched annabelle i can't I can't deal with dolls. I know we have four juniors, oh, but, but they, they look cute. nothing. Well, they don't look like actual humans. Yeah, like you porcelain. know, like porcelain Oof. dolls and stuff. I can. I don't like those. Uh, I don't fuck with porcelain dolls, bro. <laughs> Yo. Bad juju. Right. Oh, one last thing I wanted to say about the friend uh, before I forget was mm -hmm. I really love like how you're saying she was a really cool character. Mm -hmm. Like she was way more drawn up, drawn out than most films make mm -hmm. the friend character to be. But I love the scene where she's being followed and it was so, so cheesy. Like she's still behind you. And then she looks, no one's there. It's like, what the fuck? And it's like, she's still behind you. And that was such a cool. I don't know if they meant for it to be kind of funny mm -hmm. but for me it was was played way more funny than serious because it was like every time you look behind you she's not there and then oh my god it, like i wanted to laugh when she was on the bus and then she's like i'm on the bus don't worry no one's here and then sends a picture and it's <laughs> she's on the bus again and it's like she's on the bus it's like made it in time but it made no sense because she would have had been like literally rushing behind her and yeah. I just imagined in my mind, I imagined her like hiding behind a trash can really quick and then like full blown sprinting oh, yes. <laughs> to catch the bus. Now I get it. <laughs> so yeah. for me, it was just funny as shit. It's like, um, well, well, it's kind of how back in the day, you would see the person running hella fast, obviously in random directions, and they look back and they go going to a corner for some reason the killer's already there is it's so unrealistic yeah and i couldn't not imagine her sprinting from uh -huh. trash can to trash can alley to alley yeah from table to table at the bar uh -huh. and it was i just it just looked so ridiculous in my brain but then also all the texts were so generic i'm like gum i'm gonna stick to you and then like it was just so on the nose but it was I don't know if it was really funny. I don't know if it was meant to be funny, but oh. it it made me kind of smile because it was so cheesy. I think f for me, what would have made it better is if you saw you saw kind of you saw Greta sometimes, but you also saw how just by chance when the best Erica turned around to see if Greta was there, Greta was going down an elevator, and for some reason. I mean, uh, the escalator mm. and ju and then Erica just missing her, you know, like yeah. having those chances or uh, Erica turning back and then Greta's just barely going like behind a pole or some shit or turning around, mm. you know, or like a car passing or a yeah. crowd or a group of people or a bird. 
Yeah, and you <laughs> s- you show more of those by chance moments, and I think that would have been more realistic and not made one scenario be club, second scenario be in the back of an alleyway, and then they go into a bus that only has one door that you could get in. Yeah, that and then make ta- sense at all. And then uh, was it a taxi? Yeah. No, and then uh, the street. They're... No, and then it was a restaurant that Greta was already there. But how would she? How would she have already been there when she was on the bus heading somewhere else? Yeah. You know, like it doesn't make sense. I'm sure if someone. <laughs> lives in new york and they were able to tell like oh yeah this is this street this is the other street maybe someone can tell us like oh yeah this lady was literally going west and that that restaurant that restaurant is east yeah it makes no logical sense that's why it makes me laugh because i just imagine her sprinting full flipping speed yeah, I did smile a little bit at that part when I went to the the whole restaurant from the bus to the restaurant. I was like, "What? Yeah. This lady must have some fucking calves, bro! <laughs> like, she she does Pilates every day. Yeah, and speed walking. I would love to do a little spoof." horror movie where mm-hmm. it's like someone stalking someone mm-hmm. but you're with the stalker the whole time and they're just yeah. like <gasps> you know like looking serious but then you have to like sprint and stuff you know i think that that's the that's a weird thing for me i think they would be more physical physically fit than you would think yeah but it's like if that's their daily thing because that lady has been doing it yeah, for but she's old. a lot of time well you don't know how long she's been doing it and there's some older people who have great physiques. Yeah. One other thing I really liked was how the friend was like, because I was looking at the pictures that she was sending. And I was like, these pictures are really well framed. This does not make sense for someone who's probably even walking, but sprinting from point to point, taking pictures of her. Like she is always nicely framed in the center mm-hmm. and it's very clear which doesn't make sense because you had that little, who knows what little... A flip phone? Yeah, little pocket thingy. Mm-hmm. Pocket phone. But then... They it brought re- it up. It really nailed it in that I think they knew how cheesy that whole sequence was. Yeah. When she was like, oh my god, I look badass as fuck. Because she was like, <laughs> looking like she's running away and you just look like a fucking action star, you Oh, know? yes. And did you notice how the lighting was so perfect yeah. behind her? Oh my gosh. What did you think about the main actress, Chloe Grace Moretz? Uh, do you want me to be really honest? Uh, let me start. No, go. Yeah, be honest. What? <laughs> <laughs> you s- do you fuck with Drake? What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to be very, very honest. Uh, in the beginning, I noticed a couple things. I noticed that she was... Mo- she- I know what you're going to say. I got the same issues. Like, very sexual in the beginning. I thought it was me, but... No, it was it was mostly because of how she was interacting with the female, the, the older actress. Mm-hmm. Just by her eyes, they weren't looking at each other in their eyes. They were looking at each other's mouths. Yeah. And also the way they... Not, not necessarily Greta, but... Francis, how she was moving her mouth was very like you know like trying to make that type of impression on her yeah. you know like attractiveness and it was very very weird it kind of made me feel uncomfortable yep. because i felt like it was a back in the scenes type of thing that was brought into the whole movie you know like okay to explain myself is the first day of shooting They've never really talked aside from, you know, practices. And this is the first time that they're meeting each other, but they're still getting over. They're still in the stage of meeting each other. Mm -hmm. And they're still trying to, like, give their first impressions off. Like, I'm I'm this type of person, you know? I understand what you're saying. And I do agree. I think it's the lip thing because I saw her other movie, The Miseducation of Cameron Post. Mm -hmm. And she's, uh, it's about, like, a gay camp where church people are trying to make them not gay. Oh, that's not... That doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, but the whole movie is set there and then she plays like this very sexual lesbian character. Obviously because she's very repressed and then they put her in a repressed place or whatever. Oh, for sure. But from that movie, I felt very uncomfortable seeing her because it was like too much. Mm-hmm. And then in this movie, she's acting the exact same. And it's just like... 
she's always like moving, like doing something with her lips. Yeah. Like they're she's always like biting the corner of her yeah. lips, licking her yeah. top, or just I, it was very, it's very weird, distracting. But, yeah, it almost reminds me of like Kristen Stewart, but Kristen Stewart just licks her lips a lot. The mm, Twilight it Girl reminds me of. Uh... Who does it remind me of? Oh, the Alita, Alita girl. I felt that from Alita by her mouth. Because Alita's, the person playing Alita, was all, her mouth was always open. Oh. And then I guess it's the shape of her mouth. It's like but super it wasn't, plump. no. And the Alita wasn't deliberate, you know? Yeah. But in this one, she's doing it on purpose, and yeah. I can tell. And I felt uncomfortable, you know? Yeah. Do you think, I feel like it's a habit that a habit? she's brought from her real life into her acting. Like she can't not do it. Yeah. I've actually met a lot of people in real life who are like that. And they just have this um, confidence that comes from, all right, this might be really weird, but I've heard that some people act different when they com they're comfortable with how, how they are in, in bed. So it's like they have a sexual confidence that's brought up through the way they do Interact things. With people. Yeah. And it's mostly like super, super subconscious stuff that they don't even know they're doing. Like, for example, you're talking to someone and your lips are one of them the way you position your hands too like how how you commute where you look is also very important yeah so at least that's that's why i thought it was very sexual because it, they were they were making eye contact they were looking at each other's lips they were looking at each other up and down like checking themselves out the whole lip motions were a little weird and it was always like this scrunchy and I don't know. And then maybe it's also the way they shot the whole movie scene, but it showed her, the light was kind of coming from the side too and forward, so mm. it made her lips look super big. Well, she has really big lips. Like I remember when she was younger, her lips were not that big. Well, she got lip fillers. You think you so? can tell because this top part, you know how there's that little V right mm -hmm. here. It's very up. pronounced. Well, it's very up. You know, if my lip were bigger, it'd probably be like this. You you see that it creates like a little yeah, dip that's up how, here? Yeah. That's how it is. Because even her bottom lips are fat. Yeah. And I was like, ugh. I don't know. Oh. Not ugh, <laughs> but it was just really distracting. And now, now that you I'm... said it, it makes a lot of sense because, like you said, they're always looking at each other's lips. Mm -hmm. They're always moving their lips. Mm -hmm. It just gave off this weird sexual vibe. And they're at some, in some scenes where she was obviously chained and uh, Greta was beside her and she and Francis was trying to show like struggle or something and she would kind of like half moan half wow. grunt and that's when I was I, w I thought you know what all those other things you know the lip stuff it's cool maybe it's just me mm -hmm. maybe my head is in in a gutter you know but when it went to that scene and she was clearly sounding like fuck like moaning and stuff mm -hmm. I that's when I realized it was it was just something that came like you're saying something Naturally. that came natural to her so maybe that moment in time she was feeling extra extra excited juicy but yeah yeah and it's what's really weird is that her moans in this movie are the same moans when she makes lunch in the other movie her moans were exact because I remember them because they they're kind of imprinted in my mind uh -huh. and she moans like that that's her that's a weird comment we're gonna cut that out why that's a very weird comment why you you'll hear it's like in when the you, other movie no, she no, has no, sex no. scenes no I know but her moan is imprinted in your mind well yeah because it was very uncomfortable yes it's like her lips now when you see someone okay. move their lips like her saying, you're gonna be like whoa okay here's what i'm saying do you remember when you said titties and you're like why did i say titties and you didn't notice titties sounded bad until way later on that you actually forgot the conversation and you heard heard yourself again while editing yeah. You're going to hear it again when okay. you say it. So what should I say to No, I'm just saying. Oh, we well, can keep it in now that we made a whole argument out of it, but her it moans, sounds creepy. Her moans in this movie of struggle and pain were the same moans that she had when she was playing a character experiencing sexual pleasure. And it was very <laughs> distracting because I remembered 
how those sounds sounded because I felt so uncomfortable hearing them the first time around. Not because it was like a lesbian scene or anything, but mm -hmm. it was just because I really enjoyed her acting when she was younger. Oh, for and sure. I like almost saw her as, well, not as a friend because I don't know her, but when you see a really fun movie like Kick-Ass or mm -hmm. an action movie where someone plays a really cool character, mm -hmm. even though she was murking people, it still felt like a friend bond. Yeah. So it'd be like seeing your friend have sex. You know, uh, it would just be so weird and you'll never be able to see them the same, especially when they're moving their lips so damn much. Also, there's a growth between those movies. Yeah. So the first movie, you probably experienced her as like, what, 12? She, she was, yeah, like 13. 12, 13, 14. I and bet... then now she's like 23, yeah. maybe younger, yeah. probably just past drinking age. I bet you could, if we were to watch all her films, we could probably see at what film she became sexually active in her life. <laughs> wow. That's weird. I just realized how it must feel if you're an actor married to an actress or an actress married to an actor and then seeing them have sex scenes and then they do a sex scene just like how they actually have sex. You know, like that would be weird. Oh, or you actually yes. know how they act and then you're like, you didn't change or like you're doing exactly what you actually, you know, I don't yeah. know. Like you would start connecting shit. That's really fucking you weird. You would get so paranoid. At least for me, I would get paranoid. I would just Just be... having the thought of them kissing someone, not even sexual or anything. Mm. Or them saying things that they say to you like, you're, you know, those stupid one-liners or something like he only says to you because he supposedly really loves you yeah. and you have that Bond. that history yeah. that actually makes that phrase meaningful and then he pulls it up at a movie and it's like what the fuck and then you reach over and say, <laughs> was that in the script no i didn't prompt it yeah. caught her my porcupine you only caught me your porcupine <laughs> yeah but is like, do you guys have a relationship but outside of the movie? Yeah, Lady Gaga, what up? Oh. I know what you're doing with my with my boy, Bradley Coopers. <laughs> Can't funny. deny it. Mm -hmm. Anyways. I want to make a future bet that there's a whole organization of people who believe Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper are a thing. And uh, I just want to say on the record, within one year, it will be an official thing. I don't think so. But if I win, everyone listening has to donate $100 to my PayPal account listed below. Thank you. Why can't it be a bet between me and you? Like, I have to pay you, bro. Oh. Anyways. You're gonna have to give me five big boys because of that. What is a big boy? $100. So five big boys equals $500. Uh, I'm broke, Jay. <laughs> you said in a year. You cannot make $500 in a year? I don't even have a Patreon yet. Damn. <laughs> Did you like any of the music in this movie? No. Oh, it was shit. so cheesy to me. Well, there was like radio songs or like songs from artists that have already been made before this movie that they just slapped in there. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I'm thinking. I don't know. I didn't like it. I didn't like any of the music placement. It was very obvious. And they kept playing one song like four times. The song she listens to all the time. Like when the when she woke up from her dream and was playing this song, it mm -hmm. made no sense because there was no real place that music was coming from. Mm -hmm. So it was just trying to make a mood. Mm -hmm. But it didn't make sense because it's a nightmare. So why wouldn't you play it silent? You know, or... Well, because they're trying to make it as realistic as possible. I, I didn't like that. I don't like music with lyrics just playing over the film for no reason. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I get the reason trying to evoke an emotion, but I just personally don't like it. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have a score or the music is physically coming from somewhere in that world. Like I'll, a TV or something. Yeah, or her phone. Yeah. You know, there's a really cool transition that I learned about that they use music. So you, so I think in this movie they did it. It was something was playing behind a behind a door and you could it sounded like it was behind a door. And as soon as the door opened, it sounded like the music was hitting you more like it was mm. louder and i really like that for some reason it, i imagined uh what if someone was going through like a revolving door mm. and just 
hearing song changes Ooh. as you see the person evolving or whatever. Revolving. Yeah, revolving. And I don't know, it's just, I've been looking for those types of um, changes and like how you create an atmosphere with actual like movement of sound. Mm. And this is the first time that I've noticed it after I noticed, after I learned about those types of things you know and I, I thought it was so cool how they did the whole music thing you liked it yeah i didn't like the songs but i liked how they were trying to move with the song you know yeah. like how they implemented the song that is interesting yeah. i would love to i would love to try to figure out how to do a scene like that um was there anything else you noticed about my girl chloe's Oh, Chloe. I liked her hairstyles. Yeah. Her they were very pretty. Especially when she was working. Her hair was back. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like, uh, what is that actress from Mother? Oh, yeah. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. When she goes to events, well, the ones that I've noticed, like she goes to the late night show and her hair is up. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a messy but good bun. And her hair just looks slipped back and it looks bumpy or wavy or whatever. I love that style on uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence and I didn't think anyone else could pull it off but she pulled it off and it oh. looks so beautiful because her hair has like highlights or whatever and it, I don't know Does I like it, like the way texture? it looked yeah. yeah it made it made the light bounce off of her hair look even cooler than if her hair was just a flat color but yeah and also her hairstyle also gave off like a vibe of the type of person that she was on a daily basis like it was either just one style but pretty so it's kind of like she's not a super crazy person like her friend she had like braids oh, yeah. she had in one style when she was doing yoga she still looked like made up you know she was full makeup and then chloe's character didn't really wear that much makeup which but yeah i like those those parts of her character and aside from the moaning and stuff um, all, most of her acting was pretty good until you saw, oh, I don't know if you felt this cheesiness from her, uh, acting when Greta opened the door and you saw Chloe, no, not Chloe, when you saw Frances mm -hmm. on the bed and she was kind of like acting sick or oh, yeah. kind of damaged and she was just like kind of curling back and trying to escape or like think, but she was so high or whatever. Yeah. That was the only moment when I was like, hmm, maybe, maybe it was too much. Maybe yeah. they could have shot it in a different way. Or maybe it was, something was wrong to where it looked cheesy. Yeah. And I didn't like the way they delivered it. Yeah, that did look very cheesy. But her acting it. was not, not the best yeah. there either. But yeah, she, aside from all those things, I think she's uh, pretty good. I know she's very talented because when she was younger, she did a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah. I think right now she's at some weird phase. I don't know if it's... I think it's a mixture of the movies she's picking to work on. Mm -hmm. She's not working with filmmakers who are actually pushing her. I feel like these filmmakers, just from how you said the lighting, mm -hmm. they just took what they had and they just amplified it. Like, mm -hmm. oh, she looks sexy. Let's, you know, really bring out those lips. You yeah. know, like, let's really make her look good. Yeah. Because, I mean, I just imagine for them, they're like, oh, we already got a big star. Let's not make this a bad experience for her. Mm -hmm. So let's just make her look sexy and, and it'll handle itself yeah. because she's capable. But I feel like if she were to work with a director who's more, has a very uh, strict vision on what they want their character to be mm -hmm. i feel like she has so much potential to really become a different character and that's what i was hoping this movie would do because the last movie kind of soured me mm -hmm. and this one's like a double souring of what yeah she is um i'm just really hoping that maybe her next role or in the future she'll break free from her mold and become something else and that'll be that's, truly amazing well that's what i was trying what i was thinking about while i was watching this movie is that she well was that she was giving me miley cyrus vibes oh so she went through the whole <laughs> child actor thing mm -hmm. And then she was finally fed up with it. Kind of like, I'm just going to push myself as hard as I can so people don't have the same image of me now. So what did Miley Cyrus do? She did a lot Twerk. of controversial things. <laughs> 
but now you you don't see her as uh, Hannah Montana. You know, mm-hmm. you see her now as this new person. She this new person that she made for herself. But it was very drastic. When on the other hand, you know Selena Gomez, she did go through the whole child TV star or whatever. But her approach was different. It yeah. was very subtle, and that's why I'm saying that she gave me Miley Cyrus because the way she's picking her movies is very drastic. Like she was doing um. A fucking um, or Selena or Selena Gomez is another subtleness, but mm-hmm. just when you told me she was doing like lesbian movies mm-hmm. and very sexual stuff, and now with this one, she is still kind of bringing the same vibe from those to this one. Yeah. It's like that feel, I guess. Yeah. Like she's trying to break away from her mold and find who she wants to be after this chapter. After a child actor chapter has ended. I understand that. And then also, when you're a child, I bet your agent and your parents choose your roles a lot for you. So maybe she's, like you're saying, you want to break free from whatever. Mm -hmm. Even if those movies, in my opinion, were better choices because they were not your traditional kid movie movies. Yes. Like she always played very all. I think all her movies until recently were rated R. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, rated R because of violence, not, not rated R because of, of sex. Yeah, but um, and now I think maybe now she's probably choosing her own movies as she was growing up. Mm-hmm. She's like, well, I don't want to do serious stuff. Let me do, you know, let, let me explore this other side. And then also, yeah. she's becoming a woman. So oh yes, and then you have. You know, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, Mm -hmm. it's a very sexualized world now. So I feel like there's a lot of factors that are molding her. But I know for a fact, once she gets over this phase, she'll hopefully turn into like an actress. Like, you know, someone like uh, Charlize Theron or that one girl from, uh, what's her name? There's a lot of actress that Mm -hmm. we've talked about. Or like Emma Stone, you know, like picking very interesting characters to where you can kind of twist it. Like what people think you are and then kind of twist. Twist it and have a good time, you know, like Joaquin Phoenix or mm-hmm. uh, my other boy. I forgot his name. Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal. Because that's what I always thought she would do. Like, because she picks such strange movies from such a young age. I was like, wow, she's gonna be the female Joaquin Phoenix, like mm-hmm. doing very strange films, but not well, yet. She is doing strange, strange films, but not your type of strange. Yeah, you're right. I would like to work with her one day. Hopefully in the future. She seems like a really cool person. Oh, yeah. She seems really, like, down to earth. I just imagine how many, like, just the type of conversation that you would be able to have with her and the experience you would be able to bring to, at least even with me, because I don't know anything about that world. And she literally grew up. Well, not literally. At a very young age, she was exposed to that world. So, just like, so what did you do for for this movie? And she was like, oh, yeah, I did this and this. I had to learn learn martial arts i did weapon training yeah. you know like that is so amazing so i don't know keep working it chloe you'll find your you find what you're looking for i want to talk about the whole dad relationship oh. i didn't believe it for a second yeah that was weird the mom relationship how she died yeah. it was really sad but like, they didn't die? give enough time into it. They didn't like that. They oh. didn't show. They didn't explain how she died, or you know. It was kind of just yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like is it's like there's a lot of movies that I've been watching that one phrase can that can add a lot of impact. You tell it instead of show it. But this one, I think the better option would have been would have been to show it yeah. instead of just say like, oh yeah, my mom died. It was very on the nose every time. What does that mean? It's very obvious. Oh, okay. Like, from the beginning, I knew her mother died, (laughs) even before she said it, you know? And then they have that one argument, her and her friend, and she was like, it's obvious that you're just coping with this old lady because your mom died. And she said, I'm going to try to forget that you ever said that. (laughs) She sounds nothing like that. (laughs) But that's such a cheesy, like, as an audience, you already know that. Mm-hmm. And then now you're having the characters say it, and then someone who didn't get it was like, "Oh, little wing, Hasta con subtítulos, ya, ya supe. <laughs> oh my gosh! But yeah, I I feel like under different hands, this movie, uh, how you're saying, a different approach would have really made it interesting. I think this whole idea of the whole bag in the subway mm. and 
you would actually get a certain type of person who is honest enough to take it to uh, not just the lost and found, but directly to the person's address. Like That is such a cool concept psychologically how you can mess with that person and how it would uh it would be like playing with maybe not a lost mother or something or some shit like that but like an auntie you know like everyone has someone who has died everyone knows death you know so showing it the way that i was saying that you would probably go through after for i think for me it would be like after she's already been kidnapped like i was saying and then at the end you so you show like how she got there and that that lady is really not her mother or you know stuff like that i think oh fuck this uh, cool concept yeah it is really cool it, and this movie actually makes me appreciate the burning movie more because the Korean movie with the serial killer guy. It's almost, I mean, besides the train and the bag and stuff mm. is the big difference. But it's the same thing. Someone killing people. Yeah. And it really makes me appreciate that movie because it didn't give us that much mm -hmm. on how he killed them or whatever. But I can imagine more. Where this one also didn't give us how she killed them or anything but i don't even i'm not even trying like i don't even want to know because i kind of don't care mm -hmm. i think they started this whole like the inception of this story happened with the bag and they built on the whole bag concept mm. at least that's what it feel like, feels like considering what you said before that a lot of the other add-on aspects did create more loopholes it was like oh they started with the bag this lady and then she plays the piano in Paris like how would she know how would she magically learn French or how to play the piano did she ever even have a husband like wouldn't other people know her aside from her AA person yeah person was a uh, velvet buzzsaw yeah well how did that person have the other girl's phone number because what? she was calling her daughter no answer, left a voicemail, and then somehow AA person has her number now? Her phone? Maybe she had a relationship with Greta. Greta got crazy, and then she actually had to cut off Greta, and she was a survivor. But she always messaged Greta back like, hey, if you ever need me, I'm gonna be right here. And then she kept sending Greta letters to check up on her, and then, um, I don't know. Who are you talking about? The daughter? No, the daughter didn't exist. So forget about the daughter. The daughter, the picture was of a random person that yeah. she thought was her daughter. So this person is crazy. She's probably never had a relationship in her life. When she was little, her mom put her in toy boxes. How she's doing to people right now. And she, her mom was like, you can't leave me. Whatever trauma happened to her. Now she's taking that trauma and putting it in her daily life. Life to where for some reason obviously no one really likes her because she's crazy and now she's super old she has to she's depressed so she has to pretend that she did have a life so she imagines going to Paris she imagines having a daughter she goes through all that mentally and she has a husband her husband dies her daughter dies or moves away she cannot see her daughter she believes it's true so she's acting as if it was true but it never happened so the only person she probably like got I don't know what I was saying but the whole point is that it never happened for some reason one or the other she was probably taking medication and she got referred mm. to this lady this AA lady to help her Oh. And then the AA lady was like, oh, I can help you. Because obviously she was like doing her sob, Greta was doing her sob, sob story. Mm. You know, my daughter, blah, blah, blah. This lady was like, oh, shit, let me learn more about you. She figured out, no, Greta's just a crazy person. Now I'm getting involved. She saw that it was crazy. And then uh, she tried to cut off Greta completely, but couldn't only through she she was still trying to contact her because she felt bad or something like that. And then, yeah. So the AA person, the girl from Velvet Bus Song, mm -hmm. was treating Greta. Mm -hmm. Greta was the AA member, mm -hmm. not the daughter. The daughter did not exist. No, the daughter did not. And they exist. said that during that conversation. She said it like oh. I I listened to Greta 
and I heard all these things about her daughter and her husband, but I, I came to know that they were all a lie. It was just the it box. It was just the box. And okay, then okay. I even the box was a lie until in my brain until I realized that that was the only truth. Mm. Was that the box was a literal meaning of being stuck somewhere. I missed that entirely. Wow. What? Yeah, I did. I like that whole scene. Uh huh. I was like, I don't know. It was what the very fuck quiet. Was about. The way that the way that the actress was delivering it was very shaky and quiet. And then, so you could have missed a lot. Also, the music was bumped up for yeah, some reason. I don't know why she was. The AA lady was all like, and it was just. Well, maybe she. Well, I don't know if she was like the head of A or she did AA with Greta or something like that. But they had a relationship where they were both trying to go through a program to get better, if that makes sense. That was a very weird scene. So yeah. far, that actress is two for two, two bad movies. She needs to figure something out. What do you mean two bad movies? Well, I don't know. Her you think this movie is not that good? Mm. You would not recommend this movie? We'll leave it for the spoilers. This is the spoiler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, sir. Oh, if you see my eyes starting to close, it's not because I'm not listening to you or I'm bored. It's just my eyes are really tired. Really? Yeah, like, like um, you know when you stare at a screen all day? Mm -hmm. I think it's that. Well, we did watch a movie in a big old screen. Mm -hmm. I notice when I wake up before 8 a.m., right after lunchtime, like about now, they get like this. Because we need to take a nap. Yeah, I don't know. We should take a nap. 30 minute nap, boys. All right, Cineverms, we're taking a nap right now. Join us. <laughs> that would be some shit. You just pass out in one second. It's I like wish a that's... four hour episode. I li I... <laughs> and it's like, fuck, fuck, I'm late for work. <laughs> I wish I could fall asleep as fast as he just pretended to fall asleep. <laughs> that would be dope. Yeah. I bet there's some professional nappers we could contact. Mm. What is their schedule like? What mood, mindset mm. they have to be in? I think it's just practice. It's it's getting your mind into silence and going to sleep. Mm. The more I think about I need to go to sleep, the less I go to sleep. Really? Yeah, so like last night I was thinking a lot and then I just... I was like, fuck, because I kept trying not to think about what I was thinking about. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to just think the shit out of whatever <laughs> I'm thinking. And for three seconds, I thought as hard as I could. And then the next thing I know, I woke up in the morning. You slept that good? Yeah. My brain was like, Stop. it tapped out. Yeah. That's I don't awesome. even remember what I was thinking about. That's actually something that happened to me. Not, not last night, but a long time ago when I was... I don't know, 12. I was like, you know what? I'm a thing so good right now. I'm so excited about this science project for some reason. And then I went to sleep, woke up the next morning, and I was ready to go. Mm. But what, what's weird is that the day after that is when I started not being able to sleep. Because I had like dream after dream after dream after dream. And yeah. even till recently, which was my point last yeah. night, I didn't dream. <gasps> That's rare. Yep. That is very rare. And I woke yeah. up feeling refreshed mm. for the first time in a long time. You woke up at 8. I know. And we went to Well, I went to sleep at like 12. Damn, boys. Yeah. Hmm. So imagine if we went to sleep Early. on a regular schedule and then we would probably wake up at, what, 4 a.m.? Oh, yeah. That's my goal. That would be so dope. Wait, let's go back to the movie. Back to the movie. <laughs> I want to give my score. Did you, was there any shots that you liked? Yeah. You liked the picture drunken stuff. Oh yeah, I drug did like stuff. I did like the drug stuff. I did mm -hmm. I liked the um, It was it was too close for me. There was too many medium shots. Like shots where it's just top of head to like Wait, cinematography means what? Like the visuals. Oh, oh I meant lighting. Yeah, the lighting was was fine what is that what is the word for that it's cinematography cinematography is lighting anything okay. that the camera's picking up is a cinematographer oh okay 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 I, I didn't mind the lighting there was some movements that were interesting like there were some shots where the camera would kind of glide with them but other than that every conversation scene gave me a headache just because it was like very close top of head to like right a well, mid breasts we're definitely gonna cut that shit out. 
Are you trying to sound crazy right now? Am I trying to sound like a Greta? Like a Greta. <laughs> oh, oh, one. This is the thing I've been wanting to talk about since the movie it. started and I forgot. Say it. In the first couple minutes when you sh- when we have Chloe and her friend, uh-huh. I thought they were a lesbian couple. I was waiting for them to like make out or something. Really? Yeah. I think it's because you have the other movie. In my- in and then head. when we're introduced to the old lady and one of the first conversations, she licks her lips and bites uh-huh. her lips when they're drinking coffee. Uh-huh. I was like, oof. They're gonna make out. Really? Yeah. Shut up. And I was like, like you're not even lying, right? No, now. I was like, damn, this is it's gonna go full lesbian in a minute because it, there was I like sexual was... vibes the whole film. I thought I thought I... she was gonna rape her. Like there was there was the one scene where she's cuddled with her, and I was like, oh, this is it. Oh, I don't want to watch this. I'm not ready. I I actually felt anxiety. Really? Yeah, because it kind of it was. I was ready to be really grossed out. Not because it's a lesbian scene, but because she's really old and then she's really young. And then I don't like seeing her have love scenes in movies. Well, I thought because I didn't watch a trailer for this movie. Mm. You thought it was I thought it was a relationship Mm. between two girls living together. And then a love triangle is going to happen with an older woman. And I was like, oh, that's such a cool thing because it's playing with age. And I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah. And I just wanted to see like how they would pull it off and stuff. But when it, it pulled up with the scary music, I was like, wait, wait a second. <laughs> Let me rethink this uh, whole thing. Am I fucked up? Like I said before, is my mind in a gutter right now? What is this? I don't know. It's pretty funny. That's why I said shut up to you because I I had the same feelings. Yeah. And <laughs> and like, I haven't I was... seen that movie that you're talking about yeah. with her uh, being in the whole uh, camp or whatever. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I definitely felt that vibe. Those vibes. I wish they would have just showed her being like if she was a lesbian character to show it. You know, I think that would have been really cool. Like even just the uh segment of her friend being like maybe you just need a new girlfriend or something you know mm-hmm. like that would have been really cool because it just feels like a i don't know it just feels half ass like why not Go let her be it. a lesbian so i can stop think- thinking is this going to be a lesbian movie or what? i don't agree with that but i think it's just from the other movie but, but i know there's a lot of vibes it was very <gasps> you know you know what it it kind of made me feel like what? when we watched tomb raider and there was a oh, dad and the daughter relationship mm-hmm. that was and when we looked at when me and you witnessed the dad just how the dad quote unquote dad was looking at the daughter it was like this man has it on for her like he look he had rapey vibes yeah it emanating from his every pore yeah. And his eyes were undressing her. Like, that's the v- kind of vibe that I was getting with her. And it was just from Chloe, though. Now I'm thinking about it. No one else really had... Yeah, it was just from from, from her. Because her friend acted Normal. chill as fuck. Yeah. And then even the old lady. she If, if it would have been coming from her, it would have kind of changed it. Uh-huh. And like I would have been like, ooh, this is weird and a good weird. Because she's obviously a serial killer. Yeah. But no, it was just from Chloe. Yeah. Anyways... Maybe she was just, I don't know, Some maybe she was just on some. Can I, I have a question. So I've, I've heard the word roofies. Oh yeah. And I know it's a drug and oh, I yeah. know a lot of, a lot of people use it. And for some reason the person ends up being taken advantage of. Uh-huh. But what does that drug do to you exactly? What is it in the movie? You, you just... become basically unconscious. And can you remember anything? Usually no. And you become unconscious in a way to where people can easily take advantage of you. Like how she was like, oh, she's sick, get her in the car. And she didn't respond? Yeah, you can't respond because you're so out of it. So you're so... Like you're No, she, so that liquid was roofies. Yeah. I thought it was like a pill. Uh, I don't know exactly because I've never seen it. But I can... I imagine because there's a lot of drugs that you can liquidize. Or mm. get in pill form. Or like the little strip form or i don't know Mm. i'm sure there's very there's a lot of variants of it like powders and shit but well i was curious because i was also gonna say does it have a taste Mm -hmm. a smell no oh shit literally that one drop in her coffee that was it yeah wow and it's pretty long it lasts a long time yeah 
like hours? at least half a day. Half a day? Yeah. 12 hours. Maybe. I would say like probably like 6 to 12 hours. Oh, fuck. Probably the first 6 hours you're super fucked, but you're probably have like a hangover or something afterwards, like feeling really sick. Yeah. I don't know, because I've never talked to anyone that's actually been roofied. Just from what I've heard mm-hmm. and seen in movies and stuff, yeah, it, it's pretty hardcore. Damn. Well, that was the last the question date, that I had. Date rape drug. That's what that is? Yeah. I've heard that more than mm-hmm. the actual word roofied. That's why you're never supposed to take a drink from anyone. That's already open. Yeah. Never take an open cup, open glass, none of that shit. Mm. And if you're at a bar, you watch the bartender make your drink. Never. That's why, like, you know how a lot of guys are like, let me get you a drink. And then a girl will be like, okay, free drinks. But you should never exactly. let him go away and then come back with the drink. If you're letting someone get you a drink, you better be Watching looking at it. that fucking drink. Like, what the fuck? Or oh, you do that's the tw- why a lot of girls sit directly in front of the bartender. Mm. So the guys can come up, hey, can I buy you a drink? The bartender's right there. You see it. And Being then, made. yeah, and, and then, then they're right you. there. Yeah. What? The perfect, what you got to do, someone gives you a drink and you're like, what did you get? Oh, I got a whatever. Oh, let me drink that. Here you go. Drink it. <laughs> <laughs> drink it, drink it. Sign it, Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. But yeah, that was the last question that I had for this movie because I've never, like I said, I've never really thought about what that drug was yeah. or knew what it ha- what happened to you. That drug is fucked up. I don't know why that shit exists. Because there's fucked up people out yeah, there. Yeah, no, but that's just, I don't know. Do people actually take roofies to get high? That's a question I have. Like, did it start as something from for self-enjoyment and then they are like, well, I can take advantage of people? Well, I don't know. Because heroin was... An accident. Oh. There was a... I, okay, you need to fact check this. Fact but check. what I've heard is that there's a chemist. Mm-hmm. He was working on, I don't know, some medicine. Mm-hmm. But he made heroin. Mm-hmm. Or was it crack? The point is that it's... I think it was heroin because it, you, it seeps into your skin, right? Really fast. I'm not sure. Anyways, he was doing it. He was messing around and he touched it with his bare hands. And he got so fucking high. So high. And he had all the lab equipment right there to keep making more and more and more. And then he obviously became an addict or whatever. But I think that's how... Fact check me. But I think that's how heroin was made. Wow. Yeah. So maybe it was something like that. Yeah. And then the person, it was probably made for like sleeping. Mm -hmm. So to help people sleep. And then people uh, took advantage of it. And then they realized, oh, we could use it for this in smaller doses. Mm. We can make people do whatever, some shit. Wow. Or maybe it was like a medical thing, you know, like you give someone very, very, very small dose and you could work on. You know how people do, like, hypnotizing and shit? You just kind of half knock them out. And they're like, ooh, look at the watch or yeah. some shit like that. But it's Get all out. made, it's all made in, I think, in a good purpose. Like, they're working on something and then some bullshit happens, like heroin or roofies. Damn. Wait. I give this movie an 8 out of 10. Oh, I'm my just God. I'm just kidding. What do you actually give it? Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> all right. A five is a balanced movie, right? If it is for you. For me. So think of a literal scale. A five is a balanced movie. I think this movie is a three out of ten. Whoa. Damn, that's bad. What? That's pretty bad. No, it's not that (laughs) bad because a five is a balance. Mm. So it's a little bit less than five. Okay, then four out of five. Oh, no, no, you're good. I, I'm not trying to change your rating. I was just... You know, with zeros, like, no coming back, no, not oh, yeah. worth it. They should probably not even release release this in DVD. Whoa, that bad? A zero out of oh, ten. Oh, I thought you meant this one. No, not this one. Oh. This, this kind of seems like a Netflix movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now you're making me think about it. I think... It's like, um, more Velvet Buzzsaw level. Yeah, I think I'm going 3 out of 10, too. What? Yeah. Hmm. I'm thinking, like, would I watch this again? Definitely no. And then, would I recommend it to anyone? And then I'm thinking, uh, probably not. So, yeah, 3 out of 10. I give it the same rating. Well, what is my 3 out of 10? Hold on. 
My 3 out of 10 is an awful movie. So, no, I think it was just bad. Mm -hmm. So I give it a 4 out of 10. Yep, 4 out of 10. We we are equal in our scores. Yeah. Different Unity. criteria, but still same score. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, niece. That's it. Well, thanks for listening. Email us at cineverm at yahoo.com. Don't say it like that. What? Email us at cineverm at yahoo.com. You say, email us at cineverm at yahoo.com. <laughs> like you drag it out. Email us at cineverm.com. Dot com. Wouldn't it be at, at Yahoo? Uh, yeah. Oh, email us at cineverm <laughs> at yahoo.com. Fuck, yes. what have I been saying this whole... No, you said it right. <sighs> you said it right. Oh. All right. Tell us what you thought about this movie. Have you ever had a stalker? Tell us your stalker stories, unless they're very, very serious. Let us know if you don't like the dot com. Dot com. Or is it just me? It's just you. What? We're gonna cut it It just out. sounds really weird. <sighs> dot com. No, dot com. Dot com. No, you don't want, You're adding emphasis. <laughs> just listen. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot you don't have to com. say it fast. It's just not dot com. Dot com. It's dot com. Not dot com. Dot com. Oh my gosh. .com. You said it. You said it. Dot com. Why are you screaming? <laughs> Email us stuffs. Uh, follow us on Instagrams at Cineverm, on Facebook at Cineverm, on Twitter at Cineverm, and on Snapchat at Cineverm. No, I'm just kidding. We don't have Snapchat. Uh, oh, yeah. Let us know if you like this movie. Yeah. If you agree with our, with our scores. If you don't, I didn't email even, us. I didn't even know this movie was coming out, so... Oh. Uh, yeah. I would say go watch this movie. If you like cool... Whoa. If you like Netflix movies. Yeah. If you like... If you like... Well, no, this is not the review. This is spoilers. Oh. That's it. Damn We're it. done. All right, bye. Have a great day. Yes. Check out our other Cineverm episodes. Yes. Go watch Blind Spotting and Eighth Grade. Yes. Let us know if anyone, any one of you, I want are. Spider Verse. What? Spider. -Man. Email. Damn it. Let us know if any of you. Let us know if any of you live in Korea or Japan. We want to visit there this year. Well, not this year. Next year. We were trying to go to the Olympics. But, you know, hotels are expensive. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I think it would be pretty cool, like, making friends, you know? Oh, yeah. Anyways, yep. Email us if you're going to the Olympics 2020. Beijing. Oh, shit. Tokyo. Tokyo, Japan. Peace. Why did you do that? Do that? Do that? Do that? Do that to me. Why did you do that? Um, why did you do that? Um, mm, mm. I want to hear that bass drop. Oh, the bass in it? Yeah. Like, that's good. I was about to play on my phone, but I don't think you would have.